Made in New Orleans is underwritten by Art Plus Design Magazine, New Orleans Auction Galleries, and New Orleans Living Magazine. Hi folks, welcome to another Made in New Orleans. Tonight we have a special show devoted to the artists that have given their work to support the station you're watching, WLAE. Before we meet our guests from the New Orleans auction galleries, I'd like you to take a look at some of the work that I do in metal. One of the fun things of getting out of the uh, painting studio and into a metal or machine shop like this where I can do the larger scale public works um, is you've got a lot of different tools at your disposal that can help you, um, you know, create a piece. As an artist, um, what you continually search for is a way to expand into different medias, to create a, a, a body of work that is not limited to drawing or painting or sculpture, it's, it's to carry what you do, your look, your style, your uh, particular brand, let's say, into um, all of those different medias, paintings, sculpture, you know, pencil drawings, uh, it could be anything. I taught myself to draw from a book of Picasso etchings, so that's where I created the line figures that I do from that reference point. The, the, the wire sculptures came from working for my dad, uh, who was a contractor, and my job was to tie the foundation rebar to the mesh when they poured a slab, so I was working with a big roll of what they call stovepipe wire, and I learned to doodle with that, and again, that's where I got the concept that that was a physical line that I could turn into a three-dimensional drawing. So. One of the things that I wanted to do as an artist was uh, kind of come out of the studio, come out of the gallery, and bring the pieces to a larger audience through installations of public art. But the art comes from the same place no matter the physicality and the size. In my art, it's line, and um, some of the work that we created today uh, is made out of 5 8 inch steel rod and 20 foot links, and some of these things take literally eight to twelve hours of working straight through with you know uh, you know just the pegs that I use to put into the big table to do the bending of that rod those things weigh about 20 pounds a piece so you gotta move those with one hand and hold the fire and move the, move the uh, 5 8 inch steel bar at the same time and at the end of the day you're you know you're ready for you know a little bit of sit down and just relax we're using heat and torque to manipulate this steel into to linear shapes that are no longer just straight lines. In other words, if it can be drawn with a pen, uh, it can be bent and formed and heated and welded and created into a duplicate of that pencil drawing. Once you start pulling the planes of the, of the material around and, and moving it, it changes the dynamic of just being a, a cutout diagram of the painting into a, almost like a living, breathing entity. It becomes 3D and has a, a totally different feel, a totally different look. And yet it's just a progression from what I'm doing in painting to a physical, three-dimensional uh, representation of that in this aluminum, steel, brass, whatever kind of medium that I'm working in here. There's a sensual nature to working with your hands and working with the material that you're, you're forming as you move along. And sometimes the material helps create itself. In other words, the way the wire comes off of the roll, um, you know, will make me think I need to go in a certain direction. So they kind of create themselves along the way. Working in this large scale stuff, it's not quite the same. You have to physically force this material to, uh, you know, be bent or manipulated into what, you know, what I want it to be. So um, 
you know, you're working with a really straight, long piece of rod, you've got to heat it and you've got to form it and you've got to beat it into submission, so to speak. But even in that, there is a sensual nature to it because I'm forming these long, sweeping arcs and I'm coming in with these really tight bends. And if we're cutting it out on a, a plasma cutter or the water jet machine, we're still getting those sweeping lines and we're able to, to nuance those figures out of the metal. Uh, and, and not only do you get a sensual feeling when you look at it because you see the line in the form of a human or you know a nude, you actually get to touch it and you get to run your hand over that smooth metal and you know there's a little bit more interaction that goes into this type of thing. There's a certain amount of, of um, enjoyment that you get from knowing what it took to execute it, the entire process from inception, going through any kind of um, hurdles for us engineering and political and you know installation logistics uh, to seeing it um, installed, you know, it, it's, it's an accomplishment. We're back and we're joined by Ashton Thomas, president of New Orleans Auction Galleries. And we're also visiting with two of his fine art specialists, Yolanda James and Michelle Carolla. Everybody, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Steve. You. Ashton, let's go ahead and just talk about New Orleans Auction. Well, New Orleans Auction Galleries has been in existence since 1991. We're located down in the Arts District of New Orleans on the corner of Julia and Magazine Street. And we have seven or eight sales a year of fine estates featuring carpets, silver, antiques, lots of fine art, um, porcelain, decorative porcelain, and all kinds of things. Now, your company is a, is a really major auction house in the South, and y'all have very important auctions. And, you're a, a, a major component of this show because we have a chance to actually take the art that uh, we've, in many cases, reviewed in the videos and bring it into your auction house to give the artist exposure and your clients something unique. We're actually really excited about giving local artists an, a, a chance to, to be represented on what's truly an international stage. I mean, we have bidders through the internet and over the phones in hundreds of or tens of different countries around the world. We really have a huge audience and so for to expose these artists to that to that kind of worldwide exposure is, is very exciting. Right. And it builds a, a provenance for the artists, especially some that may not have gone through auctions before. That's a, a major milestone. Auction records are, are public records, so when when an up-and-coming artist can can get into that database again, you're you're exposing yourself to a, a whole other set of collectors who are looking on the secondary market as opposed to in galleries and and the new and upcoming artists that really can establish them for the long term. Right, right. Well, uh, tell me about auctions that you have coming up. Our our next auction is on May 17th and 18th over the weekend. And again, we have a great estate collection of stuff. And, and as you know, we're featuring some of the WLAE art in that sale. I guess that's a good point to start with the artists that we're going to show and the people that we've seen throughout the season. So, um, Yelena, the, the first artist that we have talked about uh, in, in, in the season was Carlos Zervagon, who's a glass artist. And you guys are familiar with Carlos. He's a, yes, an absolutely. amazing glass artist. He, yes. he started the Mid-City Glass, I think. and, mm -hmm. and um, We've actually had him on two seasons, and right. this year he made a piece especially for us on air right. uh, that will be in this in this auctions. Right, and he seems to be pretty representative of his current work, which is very abstract. I mean, it's uh, you know it's taking glass and making it into you know uh, three dimensional, four dimensional abstract work of art, right. um, using interesting colors and shapes, um, and they feel very organic but also fun and um, I mean I think this is what he said is that uh, he wants everybody to take whatever they see right, in it, it from right, it right. you know he's um, not very much into explaining exactly you know what his work represents now the show has been pretty diverse in in the type of artists that we represent uh, we've had sculptors we've had glass makers we've had painters and uh, the next uh, show that we had in the lineup of the season was Richard Sexton, who right. I think you guys were very excited about. Oh, I love his work. Yeah. I personally love his work. And I agree. I mean, he's he's been around for years. His books 
I think many of them are the, the first instance that people really start to to mm -hmm. want to look at New Orleans and the history yeah. and the really unusual nature of mm -hmm. this of the city. Well, the, the first book that he did was Elegance and Decadence, mm -hmm. and New I think he... So, oh, he wants so many accolades and for he, that book. And it's a 20-year anniversary Everybody has him. that book. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> well, I think he told me it was his like, fourth printing Absolutely. or something. And then we've yeah. got a fantastic piece uh, that he's donated to the auction as an oak tree, which yes. is one of his earlier works, but it very elegant photograph. It's just it's very. very evocative. I think it gives you a wonderful idea of how he can capture atmosphere with a very simply but very structurally composed photograph. I mean, it takes an eye to be able to, to do that. Right, right, and he's got a good one. He does, well, he does. Well, um, we also have a chance at, in, in, during the season to, to introduce artists that um, are new, mm -hmm. but are making an impact on the art scene. And um, Aaron Reichert is a young man that uh, I had the pleasure of, of meeting uh, a few years ago, and giving him a chance to, to show his work in the gallery, and he stepped up to the plate. His work is, is uh, it's figurative. Uh, it tells a, a deeper story than just, you know, looking at it from the surface, because it, it's, it's almost like it's uh, a puzzle, you know? Well, it's very energetic. Yes. Yeah. I mean, what you get at, when you look at it, it's, it's not static. I mean, you see it and you, you see the light and the energy just pulsating from his paintings. And it seems to me that he almost uses human figure as, as a landscape. Yeah, it's I like mean, the his figures are very much like these abstract landscapes. And the way yeah. he paints, I mean, y your eye is just drawn and it goes from line to line to line. And right. it's, it's fabulous. It's a very clever way. It's very fresh. It's mm -hmm. something that when you see it, it's, it's, it's different unique. and it's, it's unique. And it's definitely and, right. his style. And it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful talent that he has. Well, his progression has been pretty amazing. He's shown in a lot of different art fairs. Um, I think right. Art Basel in Switzerland yes. now. That's and, pretty uh, impressive. And he's on uh, Royal Street in Orange Gallery, which, which is, is a major awesome. gallery. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful for very short somebody time. that age. Yeah. Our big name, um, who is a Louisiana girl but lives in New York, uh, Margaret Evangeline. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I say girl. She's a sweet lady. She's uh, very interesting. Yes. We, we had a, a, a good time interviewing her. Uh, but I know you guys were all very excited about getting uh, a painter of that re much uh, renown. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she has, again, another artist who has won so many accolades, uh, including the Pollock Krasner grant, mm -hmm. which is pretty prestigious. Right. I mean, she shows in major galleries. Um, she has had s many solo exhibits. Uh, I believe she's even exhibited at the um, Ogden Museum of Art. I mean, she's exhibited everywhere. Right. She's written up in all the major magazines. I like her because she shoots guns. <laughs> well, <laughs> I do too. I her, do too. Her artistic the first philosophy is, is so wonderful because she says she looks forward to the mistake because right. the mistake is what really makes the artwork. You know, and, as and an artist, that's, that's actually yeah. true. I, mm -hmm. I, I did this whole series of monotypes, and it was all about the mistakes because right. one led to a whole new series of work. A each time you made one, it was a discovery. Right, yeah. and you have to work from the mistake. You don't right. just stop and discard, and that's great. And I think that's why when you look at her works, uh, there's so many layers to them. Yeah. And, and that's part of it. There's, there's really a story there. Uh, David Borgerding uh, yeah. is an, uh, another artist that, uh, over the last few years, has really blossomed and, and started becoming a big name in the local art community. His sculptures, when I first saw them, I, I thought whale bones. You know, it was kind oh, of that, yes. that, that. There's definitely yeah. that very nature inspired quality to them. He takes this steel and this metal and you, he does. He, he puts them in such a way, in such a composition, that you are instantly reminded of, of bones and artifacts and, and something mm -hmm. almost ancient. And it's and it's wonderful. Scale, it works small or Absolutely. Large. Right. It can translate right. either way. Yeah. And, and it, sculpture is something that, that, you know, being different from painting, and not everybody has a place, you know, for something big. But why don't you tell us a little bit about um, an auction and how artwork going through the auction is, is looked at, how how it, it's kind of a place for people to select what they want so it's not like you're limiting anybody. Well, one of the great things about, about art in the auction is we have 
almost every kind represented, and if not in any given sale, certainly across the space of several sales or a year, you know, we'll, we'll get, you know, the old masters, something contemporary, something European, continental, something mm -hmm. American or deep south, you know, a bronze sculpture, you know, some mixed media. The whole range is, is generally, appears in the auction from one time to another, if not in, in quite every sale. Right. Um, we have room in the gallery to, to bring in large pieces and small pieces and display them in such a way so that you can see where it might fit into into your home or into your business or where you might want to put a sculpture. You know, we've, we've featured, um, you know, very ornate garden fountains and garden furniture from time to time. And again, we can display those in a way that, that really let the piece make sense um, and let the collectors come in and, and and really kind of understand the piece as to, as to maybe contrast it with a gallery where you're looking at a single artist or a single right. a single pe kind of media where you can't get the sense of space that the piece can project. And there is some content, uh, context in their furniture and, and paintings and everything's mixed together so yes. you can imagine exactly. uh, things in your home a little better probably. Right. Um, you know, one of the one of the things that I love about this is most of these artists are my friends. So I've known them for a long time. Um, uh, Amanda Talley is an exciting young uh, lady that that has a, a gifted uh, talent of painting uh, these really big, energetic paintings. And you see them. I, I know if you've been in uh, Oak Restaurant up on right. Oak Street or Buff, the fingernail yes. polishing. Yes. <laughs> you see her art everywhere. I mean, yeah. it's literally everywhere. And I think she's even got. Um, a line of, of uh, textiles, textiles, you know, pillows and mm -hmm. sheets and things like mm -hmm. that. So she's a she's a, a, a studio artist. She doesn't show in galleries, and she's very entrepreneurial. Um, um, tell us a, a little bit about um, the part of of the auction where you draw in not only people that are interested in art for themselves, but interior designers and oh, people absolutely. that. Oh, it's it's always. Mm -hmm. I mean this. This goes back when we first started, um, you know, when the auction opened. It always drew interior designers as well as collectors, as well as you know, you know, serious collectors and just general public that happened to see, you and know, curious. yeah, they were curious and they just liked that one particular painting or uh, you know a chair. And right. so you know, the beauty about auctions is that it appeals to such a huge audience, right. you know, right. and if you come in for because you're interested in that chair but you happen to see a sculpture or a painting that's that's great because um, people are just drawn right. in um, by I think the, the eclectic nature of auctions right because you offer Absolutely. a little bit of everything this this is a, a, a question um, abstract versus figurative um, mm -hmm. abstract I was told by a, a guy in Miami when I had a gallery he he just sold abstracts and and I just did figurative and right. he said you need to stop that because your market's like this and abstracts <laughs> are like this. Everybody can use one. You know, you so know what? I, I think uh, that that was a way of thinking for a long period of time. Right. But we have found abstract, figural, you know, some kind of combination in between. It really doesn't matter. People are much savvier now with the access that they have to everything. I mean, they just see something and they know they like it and they do a little research on it. And right. so I have found, you know, you, you don't see that difference between abstract and figural any longer. You know, um, it's, if it catches their eye, it catches their eye. Right. Well, we're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back to discuss more of Made in New Orleans. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. back and we're joined by Ashton Thomas, Elena James and Michelle Carolla with New Orleans Auction Gallery to talk more about the show. Guys? Thanks Steve. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Ashton, you're the auctioneer at, at most of the auctions, right? One of one of let's, several, but yes. Let's tell us tell tell us how fun that could be. Well, you know the new the new question you get now is you mean just like on TV? Are y'all a real <laughs> auction like on TV? And and really the answer is we are. Um, you know, we we have 
one of us up there calling the numbers and, and we have phone bidders and we have bidders in person holding up paddles and internet bidders. And um, so yeah, we're a real auction. But it's exciting when, you, when you're when you up there and the, the excitement ripples through the room. and When there's a piece that, that we call it when it pops and it right. goes way above our estimates and, and just, you know, you've got two people or three people that really want it and the bids go up and up. It's it's a mixture of excitement and tension, and you know nobody knows what's going to happen. <laughs> all rolled into one. It's great right. fun. Well, let's get back to some of the ones that we're going to be um, looking at in 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 the collection that's coming up for WLAE auction. Um, Nicole Charbonnet, somebody that's been on the art scene here for quite a while, that has really made a name for herself not only locally but it, but nationally, internationally. Yes. Uh, with a very New Orleans, um, I guess texture. Yes. Of, of paintings. Uh, she pulls information from all sorts of, of sources, but it has that New Orleans um, decayed it has a palette yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, like an old wall kind mm -hmm, of thing. Exactly, old wood, old wall. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hers is work I've always admired. She just has a wonderful sense of color. Now, yes. have you guys, I think, have another piece of hers that's coming through that's not we part do. of We yes. do, we do. Yes. That's always fun yes. too, Yes, and right? that is nice. Yes. Um, we get her pieces every once in a while and they're usually well received. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, uh, another artist that uh, we have discovered, he's been here a while, I think, uh, started up in Baton Rouge, was Tony Mose. And he Very has interesting, I'm sorry. That's okay. He has a, he has a great um, a palette. And, yes. and a, he ranges from abstract to figurative. I really do like his figurative work. It's very interesting. It's um, first of all, it's you know, it's soothing to you know, you, you it's easy to um, to view it. It's soothing palette. I right. guess is what I'm trying to say. He uses a very soothing palette, but also there's something eerie about those figures. Like you don't know who are they. Right. You know, they're just shadows. And um, it just makes you, you know, it makes you wonder um, where does he draw that inspiration for those particular figures that you see repeating in his in his work. Right. There's always a hint, as you mentioned, you know, where y you want to know the shadows and the story. There's always the hint of a backstory. Right. right. That you're compelled to look at them because you want to try and figure it out. Right. And you never quite get it because he's that good. You yeah. know, he makes sure you you don't quite, but he keeps you guessing. And then we have a, a, an artist that's here uh, from Paris, uh, Sylvain Sanctum, mm -hmm. that is a sculptor extraordinaire and painter and a um, very interesting person. She gave us the history of her, her journey through art by uh, starting in Europe and then ending up in New York doing theater uh, backdrops and, and work and then coming here. You know, Sylvain works in stone. The, the example that we have is a stone sculpture. That is a very difficult medium. It's you heavy. have to be very <laughs> accomplished. Yeah. You really do because you you make one wrong movement and you really have destroyed right. the whole right. piece. And, and you could just knows. exactly yeah. you know that <laughs> David's <laughs> nose. I don't think well, it's pretty much kind of the same technique now. Yeah. But um, and it's a wonderful um, what I like to call an abstract figural where it can kind of go either way if right. you are more towards abstracts, fits in just wonderfully, it's a little bit more towards figural, but it's really well done, and again, very difficult medium. And then, then you have other artists, I guess, like Billy Solitario, that does these big, um, bold landscapes in small format. Right. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, it, it, that's the part that amazed me when I first saw his paintings, was the scale that he was able to capture mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a small composition by the placement of the horizon and the clouds and, and um, the way that he works. And I, just, I love his work. I think it's, it's. I do too, and the piece that we have um, in the sale is. Uh, the, the new stuff with the. With the, the oysters, the which mm -hmm. is wonderful. I mean, because taking just, you know, taking the shape of an oyster, which is a very abstract shape, and uh, using it to be a focal point of your composition is. Uh, He's yeah. almost taken it like Andy Warhol and blown it up into exactly. big pieces, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Well, and, and what he's done is he's cleverly done the opposite of what he did with the landscapes, where right. the landscapes, right. he took these huge landscapes and put them on a very small scale. Here he's taking small items and making them larger, right. and right. It's, it's a very clever play on, on dimension. Uh, Thomas Bruno was a very exciting guest. He, mm -hmm. he's, he likes to talk about what, he, it, what drives him in his work, and working um, as he does directly with his subject, doing sculptural portraiture right. in mm. clay, and then the whole process of lost wax and bronze casting, 
very yeah, difficult technique, yeah, one yeah. that not too many people work with now. So it's really significant that he does the, the lost wax technique. And then he has the added bonus of working specifically with people, which, you know, is probably very difficult. You know, right. he did a lot of commissions, and you can tell around town he's done a lot of things because he he treats it as an individual. It's mm -hmm. not just a figure. It is you get the feeling it's a specific person, even if it's not for that one piece. Right. That's how he's approached the work, and, and it comes across. But the important thing about bronze is it's a millennial material. It's there for, for you know. You have millennial. to do something really terribly bad to it. Right, yeah. right. Well, we've had a lot of people on the show um, that had uh, either two professions or started out as one uh, type of professional and ended up being an artist. Uh, our our uh, guest that we had on recently, Tor Wallen, right. is an architect and an artist, and a musician. Um, so he just does everything, but he was <laughs> A very, renaissance man. Yeah, a <laughs> renaissance man. Very, very popular uh, in the 80s with the poster movement for mm -hmm. the uh, right. Jazz Fest and French, uh, the right. Crescent City Classic and things like that, but al also an amazing abstract painter. You really get a sense of the architectural background, mm -hmm. because there's something to me when you see it even though it is abstract completely, it's color field, it's, it's very much that, that area, but you get the feeling that somewhere in there, there's, there's a structure. And, um, but then at the same time, I, you know, now that you're talking about the music, I think I can, can sense a little bit of that. But for well, me, the architectural. Well, it's not flat, that's the thing. It's mm -hmm. not flat, it's, right. you know, there's a lot of depth to it. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe that's due to his architectural training. You know, that, that central, block in mm -hmm. the right. painting that we are going to be um, uh, selling right. um, for the station. Uh, it's it's very much an architectural type of form right. within the painting. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the auction dates that are coming up for, for, the, uh, for this auction and a little bit more about um, New Orleans auction. Okay, well like I said, the auction, this sale is the 17th and 18th. We're gonna start at 10 a.m. Now you always have these killer previews. Pre the preview <laughs> will be the Thursday night before, <laughs> open to the public. We actu we're actually open for exhibition the full two weeks, including Saturdays, before the sale, 17th and 18th or Saturday and Sunday. Um, the Thursday evening, we do stay op open later. We do offer a catered reception. We try to take it one step further and make it a little bit more of an event, right. you know, some food and some drinks. 17th and 18th, we do have a, a real auction. We, you know, we, it, it kind of belies the work that everyone puts in for the for the two months beforehand to bring in everything and get everything photographed and described and advertised. You know, and the artists benefit from that too because their works are published in magazines and direct mail and on the internet. Right. Um, our sale is also online at www.neworleansauction.com. Our full catalog will be available there as well. Um, and I believe the WLAE session will be Sunday afternoon. Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon, okay. Yes. Now, uh, speaking of the WLAE group of artists, you have a special room in the uh, auction house that you've set up the monitor where they can see the shows rolling by and all the work in one collection. Correct. And then in the catalog, it's kind of sectioned off. It is Ooh. sectioned off. We have it labeled as what we call a session, where all the works will be auctioned success successively, hopefully successfully as well, but success <laughs> successively um, in one group. Um, one at a time. Right. Um, so, and and we like we like to give them exposure on that because it does benefit the station, and and it does benefit the artist to be seen as part of this group that is doing something for the station and representing the region in that way. Well, we appreciate your involvement in it because it really is important to tell um, the world and anybody that watches the show about what a deep pool of talented people we have here, and and the show. Um, I think brings that out and lets people have their day in the in the sunshine, and, and you guys help make that possible. So, I want to thank you all for being here with us tonight. Um, it's been a pleasure, and I love working with y'all. Can't wait till we get to have those pastries and uh, and see <laughs> how these things go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Thank, right. thank you so much. All thank right, you very guys. much. We'll, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. That's all the time we have. Please come out and support our featured artists this Sunday, May 18th, at the New Orleans Auction Galleries on Julia Street. For Made in New Orleans, I'm Steve Martin. Thanks for watching. Made in New Orleans is underwritten by Art Plus Design Magazine, New Orleans Auction Galleries, and New Orleans Living Magazine.